Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This is episode 486. Today we're going over the Scott Porter Wheels of Vengeance unboxing, the set list, the legacy picks, everything, as well as answering some listener questions. This is episode 46. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. It's over, Simeon. I have the high ground. Instant dead man human. Over how they, six how they people work. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to figure that out, I'm sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make your clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you're just doing your shopping directly from the horse itself, from WizKids, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIAL H10, that's D I A L H 10. For 10% off your HeroClix order, only on HeroClix products, not for Iconics, not for pre-orders, and some other select stuff. If you want to be like always in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yo. And what's that? A third person? Whoa. What What in the world? Ian is also joining us. What's up, Ian Eggleston? What's going on, bro? Yo. Yo. Wow. Is the egg stealing my yo? <laughs> Doubling it, actually. Steal another man's yo. You took full. my yo, double it, and gave it to the next person. <laughs> this town ain't big enough for the both of yo's. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, well, we start every week off with what made us happy. Simeon, why don't you go ahead and jump into that quick, my man. Oh, what made me happy this week was actually a, uh, a certain order from Cool Stuff, Inc. Um, showed up on my doorstep. Yeah, it was... Eight of every generic from Notorious. So Ooh. quite the hefty bill on it, but I now don't have to worry about any of the sealed products um, as far as like pulling generics. I did open another booster on Sunday, though, and it was like the generic pack. It had a Mirror Master, a Quardian, uh, Joker th- dude, uh, I can't remember the fourth one. And then it had randomly number five was just Mr. Freeze. So it didn't really make sense with the rest okay. of it. But it was a very interesting pack because I consider Mirror Master a generic since you need multiples. But um, yeah, it was very odd. But yeah. Okay. Uh, getting Yeah, you're all gooned up over there. Getting, yeah, you got all the goons you need. <laughs> all of my goons out. Uh, I also this man played... Gooning. I played... Um, the nightfall bane so i oh, nice. uh, i played that with two rare poison ivies some goons and both scott porters for the first time so a lot of that stuff was first time playing it ever and yeah doing a, like a little drop off team with cyborgman carrying bane and poison ivy up having bane roll to try and get to his like 13 attacks so then my vines could copy that get in power from the goon it was pretty yes. fun yeah, those poison I ivies, I think, are. I mean, people have talked about how good she is, but I think she might be like even better than what people are saying. Like borrowing attack and having flurry exploit, being able to like empower up the damage. She's wild, and with yeah. that bane thirteen attack, I bet that was sick. <laughs> yeah, it is gnarly. Every time I was like, I have no outwit. Uh, the team does have two perplexes and then prob because Scott Porter and Psy. Um but. I was like, I have no outwit, but I do just have massive attacks. Also, because it was a Gotham City Underworld theme team, the one Scott Porter gives everyone a plus one attack. So my vines are 14 attack and usually doing like three damage exploit or four damage, depending on how I positioned my goons. So it's definitely something I'll I'll try in the future. I really like the idea of also playing the uh, Super Spidey from Avengers 60th that gives everyone wild card so then i don't have to use bane because bane's great like don't get me wrong he's really solid i had him top dial with uh no tokens at one point and that whoa was, that's gnarly yeah that was terrifying for my <laughs> opponent he was like he doesn't have any tokens and i was like no because i killed one of your figures Ooh. so <laughs> yeah 
I think Bane definitely needs help with the uh, willpower. That Bane all natty. I do. Yeah. All natty. Just <laughs> like, Bane. I'm off the juice. Let me hit you for seven. <laughs> That's so sick. Okay, right on. That actually is a really cool team. I like that. I dig it. Ian, what made you happy this last week, my man? What made me happy this week was uh, actually a similar vein. I made some really cool camo teams, and I shot some videos for that, so you guys will see those hopefully pretty soon here. But uh, one of the teams functions in a similar way to what Simeon just subscribed. So, yeah, you guys will get to see that. But also, I think another thing that made me happy was I also got an order in, and I got my second Black Lantern Batman. Now, you may be asking, why do you need two? Uh, bat reasons. We'll probably do a video on those at some point. I really think that he's going to be a very prominent like meta figure, and so if I ever play competitively, I want to play with as many Batman as possible. So, going to be doing that. And then another thing is that Calder and I watched the movie Vampires. It's like John Carpenter's movie. It's made <laughs> in like 1998, and uh, it's honestly, I think, I think it's one of the best vampire movies. Like, period. Really, I I really Man. enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I didn't. I liked how it didn't take itself like too seriously, but still had like a good plot. The special effects were a ton of fun, like the practical effects, I should say. And yeah, I don't know. I just I want more movies like that now. So I was really happy you know, to watch that. It really gave me like Tremors two, but a vampire movie type vibes. You know what I mean? I have not seen Tremors two. Seen Tremors two? Well, yeah, have you seen the first one? No, <laughs> I'm oh, uncultured. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, those are literally some of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> some of the best. Well, don't worry, Ian. We'll watch them all this weekend. Yeah. All, I'm all done. seven of them. Um, just kidding. They fall off after the first four. Seven. But we will. Yeah. Well, we're not going to get into it. But anyway, seven. Trevor. Well, we got to make some money. <laughs> like the last, the last three are just terrible straight to DVD like B movies straight up. Oh, but gotcha. The first, but the first four, pretty solid, not bad movies. I enjoy them. Um. And then we have to watch the TV show as well. All two seasons of the Sci-Fi Channel TV show, of course. <laughs> it's um, too and much then, then you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> sorry. No, but in like so in the beginning of Vampires, they like they know what they're doing. They're just murking vampires left and right because they know what's up, right? That's Tremors too. That's how it starts. So it's like, okay, we know how to kill graboids now. It's just like clocking in at the job. Just all right, boom, kill it, boom, kill it, boom, kill it. Because the first movie, they're just like struggling the entire time alien worm from outer space they don't know how to kill this thing so like vampires was very much tremors too where they're just like oh yeah we know how to kill vampires let's murk these yeah. guys and then something wacky happens right and then it's like oh we weren't ready for that very similar very similar so i, I really liked vampires i had a good time watching it too i really i really enjoyed like the elements of it where instead of explaining like vampires are back and nobody believed it and oh my goodness you know, like every vampire movie does there's like one line of dialogue that explains all of that where he's like with this girl and she's like, you kill vampires? And he goes, yeah, nobody wants to believe they're real, but that's my job. And that's like all you hear about it. And that does enough. You really, do not yeah. need to do this deep dive into the lore of why they're back. So, you know, show it. Don't like tell it. Totally right. work. Absolutely. So good movie. Check it out, guys. Have you seen it's the, on Netflix. Uh, the Jamie Foxx Day Shift movie? Um, I don't think so. That sounds familiar, though. It's very similar, well, to, like, at least the concept of uh, his, like, day job or whatever. His, just his job in general is killing vampires. And he's, like, the vampire killing, like, place is unionized. So, like, he, when he joins back up, he's got to, like, pay union dues and all this, like, random stuff. It's an all right movie. It's pretty solid. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm on a vampire movie kick right now. I, uh, we've watched some some really bad ones, but uh, yes. that one, Vampires, was yeah. a winner. It was a real diamond in the rough of vampire movies that we'd there's, seen. Oh, there's so many bad ones. Who the Dracula 2000 trilogy is just like, uh, stay away. Yeah, it was really rough. I mean, yeah, stay away from it. It was rough. Trilogy. <laughs> it was bad. It was really bad. It was, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a rough watch. Uh, what made me happy this week? I have been checking off the list for breakfast spots here in Omaha and which ones have breakfast burritos and trying them because we are still on the search 
to find a replacement for the greatest breakfast burrito in America, which is the Mr. Smith's Ace Hardware Breakfast Burrito. Um, I went to Shirley's Diner this Sunday, official breakfast burrito ranking. It has the size. It was a massive breakfast burrito. Negative points, however, for the fact that I couldn't pick it up and eat it like a burrito due to its absolute width and length. Um, And also, it was covered in cheese. Now, I will say the cheese was great, but um, I do like eating a a burrito like a burrito and not fork and knifing it. I'm I'm not big into eating a handheld food with a fork and knife, and this kind of puts you in a corner or you just get your hands all cheesy and it's so big you really can't take a bite with it. But it was delicious. It was very solid. But overall, the eating experience of the yeah. Shirley's breakfast burrito just uh, she's just on the outside. It. Yeah, she she's on the outside. It's just, defeats yeah. the purpose Not, of like the burrito. That's what I think. You yeah. Wanna, then it's you just pick it up. A not messy plate of food because it's like wrapped. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, I mean, I don't know. That's what I wanted. It was still good. It was an interesting breakfast burrito in the way that had pulled pork instead of sausage inside it, which I was like, okay. It turned out pretty well. But uh, overall, due to the fact that I can't actually eat it like a burrito and just kind of kills the vibe, it, uh, it gets a solid seven. Solid seven because taste, it was great. It was a lot of food for the price. But overall, it's not quite there. I still say the, I want to say it had summer kitchen was really good that gets like an eight maybe an 8.5 if we consider uh (laughs) mr smith's like a 10 and then i guess jojo's diner doesn't have a breakfast burrito but they have a breakfast chimichanga i want to say it's like cut up like four little slices that's really good um but again not a burrito so we're still looking we're still on the lookout for the the breakfast burrito to replace the best breakfast burrito ever but it was fun it was still a fun time and i just gotta hang out with my little bro all day Sunday. We were starting to work on some cosplays for Nebraska Con is coming up. And then so we bought a bunch of spray paint. Spray paint is very, very expensive nowadays. Not a fan of how. Is it really? It's like $7 a can. 6 to $7 a can. Hmm. And I, I'm pretty sure when I was growing up, it was like 4 bucks, Like it's for weird. a can of spray paint. Like I, am, I, so, I used to work with, um, actually used to get all of the spray paint for free. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. He would oh. steal it. Steal it from work. I, I, <laughs> he's a bad person. I get it. Okay, I see that. The I feel old like, oh. five finger discount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you tried what is it called? It's called Rodeo? No, Broncos. Okay. Have you tried Broncos yet? Uh, they're like burgers, right? Like they're Broncos burgers, what they're called. I haven't, no, I haven't tried it yet. I've won- I, I want to go. I think it's probably the closest thing that we have to like a steak and shake outside of Culver's. Oh. But it is, yeah, it's Say just, more. Uh, you know, started in 1950. It's very, like, classic burger, hot dog. Uh, Speaking of Culver's, dude. And, like, kind of options. We have, to, we have to go to Culver's at some point. We don't have a Culver's close to us, which kind of sucks. But they're All doing like the, uh, minutes away. the curd burger all month long. Oh, God. The, the cheese cocaine. curd patty on top of the burger. Oh, is it just I've like wanted one to try massive. this for years. It's just one yeah. massive yeah, bird it's a cheese instead of a curd bun. patty, dude. It's literally yeah. like, yeah, it looks like a burger patty, but, you know, it's just filled with cheese. If I could get that and then just an IV drip of the custard, that'd be great. Yeah. Ooh. Art stopping good palpitating meal right oh, there. That, that's what I was going to say about Broncos is uh, their shake of the month or whatever is like strawberry cupcake or something. Ooh, okay. Okay. I gotta try some Broncos. Yeah. I want to try. I like you. You had me at Steak and Shake. Steak and Shake of the West, of the of the Northwest. Absolutely, let's do it. I see. I know it has like two locations here in town, and I almost went. There's back in one July, pretty close to you guys. Uh, Is there? Like oh, right nice. near Don and Millie's, I think. Um, oh really? Oh it's, shoot. It's okay. a little bit further down, but okay, in I'll that go, then. general vicinity. I'm right on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully. You're not hungry, and if you are, well, maybe you have to grab an extra bite to eat. That was a lot of food talk. But let's get into something that doesn't just fill your tummy, um, but empties your wallet, but fills your soul. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about hero clicks here. Huh? So, <laughs> Wheels of Vengeance, the big spoiler from Scott Porter. His unboxing series was this week. It We got to see him open all sorts of cool, really fun stuff, and it also ends with getting the full set list and getting all the legacy picks. So... 
we can try to roughly go day to day. I don't know what he, now that we just see everything, we don't have to talk about each day individually. But overall, guys, just kind of watching the unboxing, how are you feeling getting into Wheels of Vengeance? Kind of understanding like what the four figure boosters are looking like, what distribution might be. Obviously, this is just one brick. But how are you feeling so far? Just off rip. I really like it. I think Wheels is one of the just it's it's just such a unique set. Like so often we've gotten sets where it's like, oh, it's the X-Men again or, you know, the Fantastic Four. This feels like a very thematic set. Uh, the generics look great. And the four figure booster thing doesn't bother me a ton because the rare sculpts. I know we talked about this previously are just so good. Like the double base yeah. figures I'm really excited for. And obviously the Hero Glow thing, I know people are pretty split on as well, but I think it's always cool to have just a different dial color. So the fact that that spans like an entire set, like it's not defined for just chases, I really get down with that too. And I'm, yeah, I'm just interested to seeing the dials for like the full set list. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but there are some people on there that look really cool or sound really cool, I should say. Yeah, <laughs> I like them. I'm just a fan of any multicolor like base, and it's glad to see that back. I but do. Uh, I understand people being worried about like potential the plastic being brittle. So we'll see. I'm sure yeah. WizKids thought of it though. Why would they be like, yeah, just whatever, crappy plastic, just do we'll, that? We'll I don't know why they would be like, yeah, terrible plastic that just breaks apart. Uh, I do wish that type or RPG studios had hit us with like a black light or lights off or something. I get like. You can't charge up glow in the dark stuff and then also make it show up on camera like in a relatively quick time. But we didn't really get to see the glow yet. So all we've seen right. is like the, the digital renderings on the box of the glow, the glow yeah. to be the glow, like what the glow could look like. Yeah. But no, the I glow. I'm super happy with all the generics that we've seen. Um for some reason, the zombies are just, like, really slow again. But, you know, that's, like, the whole shamble thing. Yeah. Uh, I, Yeah. I Also, did you guys notice he pulled multiple double rare packs? I did see that, yeah. Oh. That is... I mean, it's not a first it's first, because we've had, like, super rares with chases. We've had rares with super rares, rares with chases. But he would pull, like, a, a rare... Uh, Twinkie base with a rare single base. That was his Drac pack, right? Dracula and Orb are both yeah. rares, I want to say. Oh, yeah, it was okay. interesting. Yeah, yeah there's that oh, one. I, and I then I want to say the Moon Knight also, he also pulled that with maybe another rare, but I... Okay. Well, you know, with Notorious coming out, we are definitely seeing a shakeup in how they've traditionally done things. There were packs with multiple primes, a prime and a super rare, multiple super rares, a god pack that went unannounced, and then, you know, yeah. like brick distributions where you had like four primes in the same brick. So maybe this is WizKids gearing towards like a new just, or would, would it be distribution or coalition? However you want to cut coalition, that up. Right? Yeah, um, it it would definitely feel better if I'm pulling a rare that I get two rares. That would definitely feel better, I think. So if like I didn't pull like a super rare or a chase, but my pack gets two rares. Yeah. I also feel I don't know. I, f I feel like it's interesting. We'll have to see where it goes if that is actually the case, and it wasn't just a one off. I really thing. enjoyed how Notorious was done because you know previously like the I mean the worst feeling in the world hands down back in the days of like common primes when you're just starting your brick up and the first booster you open is a common prime and it's just like the kiss of death yeah now that we have like less defined like you know in packs and in bricks like distributions I think I honestly like it you know it might lead to like higher variances but from what I saw with notorious there was no real like burn brick you know. All of them felt pretty solid, so if wheels can like hold to that standard as well, having like double rares or double super rares or maybe a chase and a super rare, you know, what have you, I'm totally down with that. I really like that. It makes the value of a single pack, I think, more enticing. For sure, yeah. What did you guys think of the uh, 
the Avengers starter set uh, modular maps that have like the tongue and groove kind of effect. That's cool. I I was waiting for them to finally do something like that. I was thinking they would do like fold out maps, like how like most games are, like a Monopoly board type deal. But I like this. I like the modular maps. That's fun. So, I get down with it. I, I like I'm it. Excited. Yeah. He didn't show off the whole thing. He just showed off. He held like three of them together. And so it is cool because especially for teaching like a newer player, being able to self-create like a smaller map. And I'm sure like some of the scenarios that come, if it comes with scenarios, I don't know. But I assume like some of the other starters, it'll come with like a scenario or whatever they called them. And you'll play on like a smaller version of it. But I don't know. Yeah, the starter sculpts too were fantastic. I, Holy crap! Yeah. I I know it'd be bad because people hate sculpt reuse, but I would love for that Spider Man, Iron Man, uh, like all of those characters. I'd love for them to actually be like super rares or rares in a set someday. I'm totally fine with it. Those were like chase level sculpts. That's the best looking Iron Man they've ever made. Yeah. Maybe the best looking Spider Man to go with. Like they. So they really killed it with those. Spider-Man. I agree. Yeah, I think the only Spider Man so that would beat that one out is the one where like the sinister syndicator like swinging up at him. I really like Spider Man Noir if that counts, where he's like running on the wall. Oh, that's also yeah, also just a really solid one. You know, but for classic Spider Man, I don't I don't know what even holds a candle to this one. Clearly, the Fear itself Spider Man is the best. Oh gosh. Mm. Just because he always comes Andy broken Kane like nine times out of ten, he would he, he comes like broken and then blue. after fixing him, he's broken again, breaks. just yeah. constantly broken. <laughs> I think M like, ten Spider Man was one of like probably one of my favorites. Oh like, yeah, that one was really all good. around him. That's mm, really yeah, good. yeah. But this Spider Man with the the camera selfie on top of yeah Empire State, it's so sick. It's just like perfect. So I'm excited now for. To get like to bring it back to wheels, I'm loving I'm loving the sculpts just because we're also talking about sculpts here. I think this might be some of the best sculpts of the year in commons, yeah. uncommons, rares territory. It's awesome. Like I'm really blown away. The fact that one of the generics, the fire demon, is also hero glow. That is so sick. That's to so me. cool. <laughs> Very excited for that. I yeah, I'm so stoked. The werewolves look good. The vampires look solid. Very Nosferatu himbo vampire look. I think it's very <laughs> funny. Um, Reminds me a lot of uh, the like what we do in the shadows TV series. Oh yeah, <laughs> the guy who lives in the basement. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember his name. I don't know. He's yeah, the classic vampire. It's like Frank or something. He's tall too, man. Like that, I was saying earlier, that vampire could play basketball for sure. Like, <laughs> they must have he been is tall. Like, I think yeah. he, I think it's Dracula's knees bent. That vampire, generic vampire, is actually a little taller than Dracula is. It's kind of funny. Yeah, the, you got to be a fan, Ian. That it's like very much Wesley Snipes' blade is the inspiration for oh, his sculpts. Yes, absolutely. Dope, the yeah. one we saw on the bike, and now the common too. Like, yeah. it's beautiful. That blade is, oh my gosh. He's awesome, too, for a common. If you guys want to jump into, like, dials, the blade is, he's seriously fantastic. Uh, Comes in at 85 or 45. He's got Avengers, Marvel Knights, Midnight Suns, Monsters, Mystical, and Police. He also is a team player for range. And so, traded Super Sense's willpower, which is just fantastic. And top tile, he's a hypersonic with 7, 11 with blades, 18 toughness, and 3 with shape change. If you play him at that lower line, he's still charge blades, combat reflexes, shape change. Uh, 8-click dial if you play him at full, 5 at half. I just think it's a really solid blade. Like, this is a great common, great power selection. I love seeing hypersonic on blade, like he's fully tapped in to, you know, what he does. And also the trait being named Daywalker, the, just beautiful. Right, it's good stuff. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. I like that he's a a baller like sealed common like pick. Oh yeah, it's really cool. Like I would I yeah, would most likely now. play him at 45 points every day, just because I prefer yeah. that like combat reflexes charge kind of situation. But in sealed, I can definitely see an argument for 85 points. Definitely. 
And you know, lower I really dive like, too, like the regen, the steel energy, like he can probably yeah. get back up. Uh back in War of the Realms we had like the Rally Die Revival Blade, and now we're getting this one, so yeah, another sealed oh, yeah. not necessarily bomb, but definitely really solid play in the common slot. I forgot about the blade that never died in a BR. Yeah, dude, War Realms Blade, yeah. I have I love twenty four rally common blades. blades. Yeah. Legitimately, like, like in, a, in a BR, if you didn't go after him right away, by turn, like, two or three, he'd have, like, four rally dice and then just never die. Yeah, I lost, uh, I think every War of the Realm sealed game that I lost, I, I played in three of them, was two blade. Oh, every single time, he would just awful. have, like, 50 on him, and I'm like, all right, well, I guess you win. <laughs> It's almost like so, uh, Ian's uh, mm -hmm. vampire or something. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, well, that would make me closer to being the biggest fan of somebody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, so Blade is 003 in the set. I want to talk about my favorite generic in the set, and that's 004 Werewolf. So, uh, you beat me to it. I want to talk about it. All right. Uh, okay. I'll it. I'll it. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll talk about I'll, it. I'll, I'll talk about so the trait, and you can go over the dial. Um, okay. That's so... Weird. Dude's insane for both point values, but the the trait is why I like him the most. So it's it's Moon Harvest or Blood. At the beginning of your turn, roll a d6 for all friendly characters with the Moon trait. Werewolf can use the resulting effect until your next turn. On a one through four, you get Shape Change. That's like considered a fail roll for most of the time, and you get Shape Change. And then on a five or six, you modify Attack plus one and get Flurry. So. Yeah, that's crazy. Like either either result, I'm probably happy. Obviously, I want shape change defensively, and then like on a turn where I've got like a big attack setup, I want the plus one and flurry. But yeah, just like oh, I I rolled a one on my roll. What do I get? Oh, that's right, shape change. One of like the best defensive powers in the game. Yeah, it's so good. And then if you hit that high roll. That plus one attack and flurry. He already has charge, battle fury, blades. You know, he's only got a six speed charge, but still, dude, now he's an 11 attack, battle fury, blades, charge piece, flurry. It's so nuts. So I, I love, I really like Werewolf a lot. He's so cool. He he's also got stuff. some great he's keywords like, later. Yeah, animal, monster, mystical, dude. Now I will say, this is kind of interesting. So for some characters, like Dracula Vampire, they have Vampire Brood. But, like, Werewolf doesn't have... I looked it up. It's Werewolf Pack. And then Zombie doesn't have, like... I want to say it's Zombie Horde. So there's some characters have their undead version, like, keyword. And then some don't, which Ghost is kind Zombie. of interesting. Well, yeah, right? So there's no Zombie Horde. There's no Werewolf Pack. I, I want to see. Does Fire Demon have Demon Legion? Let me double check. He doesn't have Demon Legion. So I don't know. Like, some of them have it. Some of them don't. So it's kind of interesting to see what ended up getting some of the undead keywords and which ones didn't get some undead keywords. I'm a big fan of all the generics, though. I love this is a unique take on zombie that shows that there are like the different classes of zombies. You'll see this a lot in zombie movies or zombie video games. So I like that you can have a more attack focused like charge zombie and then you can have like a support <laughs> like sidestep and power zombie. And yeah. then you have like just a tanky, like I would call this like a puker, like tank zombie. This this kind of feels like some Left 4 Dead 2 zombies to me with the invulnerability, poison, like puker zombie. I think that's cool. The the frenzied zombie, the charge, shape change, and then just like just kind of a, a generic walking around, a member of the horde, buffing you. That, that feels like uh like in a movie or game or whatever when like six zombies are surrounding somebody and they yeah. jump down and they're all like trying to munch on them. That's what like all those empowers feel like with on that dial. I agree. And then, I agree. I was picturing more of like a, like a cheerleading thing where they're stacking in a tower. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes just as much. No, that makes just as much sense. Voltron then, like, zombie bringing back grave markers. So in zombies KO, do you just make a grave hindering train marker in the square? That's hilarious cemetery gates so i'm i really i'm really enjoying like all all the generics yeti doesn't get santa's workshop or the snowfall team ability it's so sad no. but uh he's still cool he's still mystical so you can play him with a lot of those characters Mummy. which is really fun 
Six mummies, clicks. mummies, crazy. Cool too. Oh, yeah, Six mummies of invincible for yeah. thirty points. Yeah, he's just like, he only has three slow. movement. Yeah, but still, like, I mean, he can pick up and throw a, throw a heavy tank. object at you, though. That's right, heavy yeah. terrain marker. He's got that super strength, sidestep, super strength, tossing, just tossing the sarcophagus at you, bro. <laughs> Did we? There are objects in the play at home kits. Did Scott show them? I honestly kind of skipped a little fast past there. Sorry, Mr. Um, Porter. I think they were um, like. Did he show any of the objects? He said, I remember him saying something about grave markers, but that might have been okay. during Notorious. Um, oh, sure. Um, yeah. Well, let's finish up a little uh, a little main set. I want to talk about the play at home kits for sure because I think they're really, really cool. And they're definitely someone that I really want to buy because I yeah, love the map choices. A... Some good um, stuff in there for sure. I can chat about them really quick while we're here. I love the reprinting of the Fear Itself stuff, and it gave me hope for a half second that we would get some Fear Itself stuff in this set, but we didn't. That's fine. It's whatever. I don't care. I'm not crying. You're crying. Um, <laughs> but it's cool that we get Blitzkrieg USA and Bronxton, Oklahoma. My two favorite Fear Itself maps are now back in modern in their shortened versions. So I get to have a renewed sense of like nostalgia playing them in a new way, which is really cool. Cause I, I really like those maps. Those are my two favorite moments in all of fear itself. Blitzkrieg USA when sin kills Bucky, which is actually really sad, but whatever. Um, and then in Bronx and Oklahoma, when cap is making the final stand against the end of the world and then just holding the line until the mighty show up and then the mighty show up and they mess up the worthy. And it's really cool. So, like the end battle map is so sick to finally have in now modern in this new short style, which I'm really happy for. So I know a lot of people are kind of iffy on map reprints, but I like them when they choose really cool maps to reprint. It's really cool. Um, then, you know, sometimes they choose Ultron's layer and that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Sometimes uh, more like minor, tunnels, minor back. shade, cool. minor shade. I, I uh, don't. Well, OK, now wait. If they bring back Morlock Tunnels, it's just like the middle-ish part, right? So that's not that bad. Well, it's still... didn't Morlock Tunnels exist prior to like this? Oh, most yeah. Version? You mean when they brought back the full size? Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was a did. that was a bummer. Correct. All right, so it's okay yeah, now. The play at home <laughs> kits. The Ghost Rider comes with the flame smoke marker things, which they don't have okay. any stats on them. They just say smoke with like an image of fire. And then the werewolf, uh, is it werewolf by night or is it? Yeah, it's, it's not man wolf. Yeah, it's not man. Um, man wolf is white. Yeah. Werewolf by night's brown. He comes with grave hindering markers, which just do the normal stats that like a one by one do, but it has a picture of like graves on it. So, okay, Sick. they're all, so they're all one by ones right though. Right no right. specialty sizes from. Oh, I see. The play at home kids. I'm all, I almost wonder if they, they use their spooky stuff a little too early. Because in the Iron Man Avengers 60th, like, play at home one, he had, like, fire. And he had, like, skulls and, like, a trident and, like, all this kind of spooky stuff. So I almost... He had the pool of lava. Like, all that is also very, very spooky things. So I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. The... What I really like, too, just speaking of, like, Man Wolf, is that it's cool that he's back. He was last made in, like, Incredible Hulk. So oh, yeah. a cool 11, 12 years, finally get a new man wolf for those that like John Jonah Jameson jr. As man wolf. I think he's a really fun character. He's teamed up with cap a lot. So I'm happy to have him back in modern. So that's really cool. But, uh, I think, I think boys, we got to talk. We got to talk about drag. We have to, oh, we've we been hyping up drag. The drag. We might as well, right we might as well start getting drag. into the rares. We just—I mean, we talked a little bit, some generics. But we should—we kind of we should probably touch on top. how insane this play at home Ghost Rider is first. Oh, I oh, do. Yeah. he was on my list because I do love that guy. I think uh, just a quick statement on him, then I'll—I'll I'll give you the wheel. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. I think so. We've seen this two hundred point dial format uh, with now Hulk, Iron Man. Spider-Man. Are there any others? Spider-Man, there we go. Yeah, so three other figures. And I think this one is the best of them. This one truly feels loaded up like a 200-point figure should. And I do want to see this for more like mainstay characters. I enjoy these dial designs. But I, I really think they nailed it with this uh, Ghost Rider. And why don't you tell us a bit on why, Simeon? Well, and part of the thing that I really like about it is Ghost Rider makes sense to be like a 200. Like, he hits into that range. 
Hulk, Ghost Rider, both hit in that range. Iron Man, you could make an argument, hits in that range. Spider Man, I guess he. Nah. His was stretching a little bit, but his was really fun. Yeah, his is real fun. It was stretching. Uh, so this 200 point Ghost Rider comes in one of the play at home kits. Um, I think the. The Werewolf by Night, I'm pretty sure, is the online exclusive. So, like, that's only available at WizKids, I believe. Uh, but this one you can okay. buy from any local store. So, first off, he's got Champions, Defenders, Marvel Knights, Midnight Suns, Thunderbolts, Mystical, and Vehicle keywords. He has the Mystics team ability and the Team Player team ability. He has two traits and two special powers. His first trait is Summoning Hellfire. When Ghost Rider hits... Or when a friendly character is hit by an opposing character, after resolutions generate a fire smoke terrain marker adjacent to the attacking character. At the beginning of your next turn, even if this is lost, deal one damage to a character occupying that marker, then remove that marker. So it's just like a free uh, smoke cloud that it's. It, I think it does count as smoke terrain because it says smoke terrain. So just like the hindering okay. graves are hindering. Uh, but yeah, it's just a free way to deal damage to people that are either um, hit by Ghost Rider or uh, next to opposing characters that hit friendly characters. Next, he has Traded Steel Energy, which keep that in mind, and Willpower. And then he has an attack power that is almost his whole dial. It's only missing from two clicks. Clicks 9 and 10 for some reason. And that is Poison, Quake, Giant Reach of 4, when Ghost Rider uses poison, opposing characters within four squares occupying or adjacent to any fire markers are considered adjacent and are dealt penetrating damage instead. So that's pretty dope. Four range uh, follow up poison, quake. I guess. So like, not only do you like running shot, or he doesn't have running shot, you hypersonic, hit somebody, drop a uh, fire smoke terrain marker adjacent to him, and then or in their square if it's Ghost Rider hitting. And then you can poison that same person, and then uh, I think it's at the beginning of your next turn, you deal them an additional one. So, yeah, he this Ghost Rider would just burn through Spider-Man's dial, that 200-point Spider-Man, because he's just dealing yeah. all kinds of free damage. Um, top dial, he is... Has two clicks of hypersonic with 12 attack and 19 defense with invincible. He starts with close combat expert, so he's going to be a 13 for 5 on that top click. On click 2, he gets uh, exploit weakness with 4 damage. Then he goes to flurry for clicks 3 and 4. And then on click 4, he also, well, he gets battle fury on click 3 and then goes back to close combat expert on click 4. But on click 4, he activates his very first stop click, which he has three of. So very cool for a 200-point mystical character, not just to have super heavy reducers, but also have three stop clicks, each of which are invincible, regen, and Ghost Rider has safeguard outwit. So the other three powers on his dial can't be outwitted at that point, which is not for nothing. That's pretty solid. Most of the time you're going to try and get rid of his invincible regen anyhow but he's already got that protected because it's a stop click. And then, yeah, you can't even get rid of like his close combat expert or flurry on that click. Uh, after that, he goes down to some charge, impervious. He keeps alternating exploit, battle fury, combat, or close combat expert. He hits his second stop click on click seven, where he goes back to hypersonic. And then he gets regen uh, from clicks 8 to 10, which I'm never using regen with this guy because, again, he has traded steel energy and willpower. So he ends the dial on click 11 with hypersonic 11 attack, 3 damage battle fury, and one more stop click just for good measure. I think this guy's insane with a giant reach of 4 that gives him an effective range top dial of 11 which is pretty solid. He ignores elevated and breaks through blocking terrain. So you can't even can't even really barrier him in too much. I guess well, you can with the uh no you can't because he can quake and then giant reach you. So yeah. Yeah. Take that stop sign. You loser. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, really like the the giant reach for, you know, the 
I feel like a lot of Ghost Riders in the past have tried to make like a whip chain ability, and some have succeeded more than others, but this one feels like, okay, this is Ghost Rider. Like, I'm picturing him just swinging that thing above his head, which is like, that's how I want to see Ghost Rider. So I really like this. I agree with you that this feels very fitting for like the 200-point dial format. And yeah, Mystics, with this much Invincible and three stop clicks, it's just wild. And his attack just never drops. I really like that. It's it's really good. Yeah. Having, <laughs> having Giant Reach of 4 with Flurry and a 12 for 4 and Steel Energy. So, like, if you're on click 4 and, like, you get knocked to that and your opponent doesn't take you off of that, gosh. They're going to have a bad time. Yeah, you're... I feel like he's healing right back up to click two. Like he's got a lot of opportunity to stay going. The traded willpower feels like a necessity for characters that are of this point value. Yeah. And just the amount of healing you can do. Like if you don't have a way to reduce penetrating damage, that mystics is just going to eat you alive. He does like, you know, it, it does kind of suck that he can just be outwitted if he's not on those stop clicks, but I don't know. Yeah. It's a fair trade-off. You can't just give power cosmic to everything. It wouldn't really make sense here. And uh, I don't know. You got to kind of avoid just handing powers out like that. Just being protected out wit is a little, you know, we saw the likes of Thanos being able to like reduce pen, can't outwit him, any of that. And it can spell out some bad times. So I think they did a great job with this one. And I'm definitely excited to play him. Uh, 100% will pick up this play at home kit. Yeah, you get a map and yeah. probably, I won't say it's the most definitive version of Ghost Rider. It's not my favorite sculpt of Ghost Rider, but it is a extremely solid Ghost Rider dial. This is like OG Johnny fully ready to like take on uh, Mephisto or something. I dig it. And uh, believe it or not, there is a better Ghost Rider in this set. I know we were going to do Dracula next, but somehow they made, uh, some would argue this is a little too late because Scarlet Witch has rotated, but it doesn't even matter. This ability is so, so crazy. Uh, The Super Rare 048 Ghost Rider, who is also Johnny Blaze, also Mystic's team player, four range, dual target, 70 points, Defenders, Heroes for Hire, Midnight Suns, Thunderbolts, Mystical, Ruler, Vehicle, Ruler keyword. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, there's a lot of really good rulers right now. Uh, improved movement ignores elevated in characters. He's got the pilot trait for Ghost Rider and Midnight Suns. Do we want to go into what that does? Or yeah, we'll go probably into cover it. the pilot trait just once. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do the pilot trait for you real quick. So pilot is normally gonna what we've seen. It's gonna give you one named keyword that this character is, and then the character's name. And so anytime I say like this character's name or keyword, that's what I mean. Uh, So when revealing your force, you may choose a single base character on your sideline that is named this character or has the keyword and turn it to any click. This character can use a standard attack and damage powers displayed on that character's dial. When So specifically, when uh, this character is KO'd, before removing them from the map, generate the chosen character from your sideline on its last non-KO click. This game, that character can't be healed or replaced and isn't scored when KO'd. So it's like the old vehicles, but way better. It takes up a way sideline better. slot, but so it's, much better. It's gonna be very interesting what keywords they allow this to work on. What uh, all riders get this? What pilots all get this? Um, but yeah, just having the fact that you can use a standard and attack, a standard attack and damage power displayed on that character's dial. Um, kind of insane you just turn it to any click like whichever one's gonna suit you the most so a lot of times that's gonna be like a pen something kind of click it is it never mentions that there's like a doesn't matter because they don't score the the pilot when they get ko'd so if there's like you know in a thousand point ghost rider in la la land or whatever you can bring them in on their last click granted they can't be healed but they should probably have some insane stats for their point value so I yeah, depending on what characters they give this to and what keywords they allow this for, there may be some pretty crazy pilots that you can pop out on their last. So yeah, and it's also a protected pulse wave too, so there's no real way to get around it. It's just another thing you have to kill in a way like a, a pseudo stop click. 
But what makes this guy so crazy isn't even that. It's his next trait, which is King of the Underworld. Ghost Rider and adjacent friendly characters can use their powers regardless of opposing effects. Protected Pulse Wave. So you cannot Pulse Wave through this. You cannot outwit it. You can't say that you can't use powers. If you are next to Ghost Rider or you are Ghost Rider, your powers are staying put. Which is just, I mean, it's wild. And the fact that this guy is also only 70 points makes it so much more absurd. On top of that, his last trait is Stuntman of Justice. Stunting, let's go. Regeneration, willpower. When Ghost Rider makes an attack, before rolling, you may choose that this roll can't be re-rolled or have its dice replaced. If you do, Ghost Rider deals penetrating damage, and after resolutions, deal him one unavoidable damage if he missed all targets. So there's kind of a way to lock in a roll, you know, kind of gamble on making a big hit. But uh, not only is this guy, like, so defensively powerful with that King of the Underworld trait... He's also bringing to the table leadership, which is a power that you want on pretty much every team. And then he's just a hypersonic poison invincible piece with 8, 11, 18, 4. He's seven clicks long, full dial of poison. And, you know, if if he takes a hit, he does get considerably weaker. Like click three, he goes to toughness and charge. But if you get just a few attacks in with his hypersonic and you get any value from your opponent not being able to strip you of powers, which... If we look at how metas have kind of shaken out in the past, a lot of it is I'm going to run up to you, I'm going to do a bunch of damage to you, and I'm probably going to take out a few of your powers along the way. Being able to stop your opponent from doing that is just so, so, so massive. So expect to see this guy on quite a few tables. He's, uh, I mean, frankly, he's just, he's just crazy. Yeah. You had mentioned I Scarlet Witch. I agree. But, like, outside of Scarlet Witch, there was the... Was it Empire Beast to do like a thing that got rid of yeah sort of and stuff? It's still in modern. There's Cosmo who says you can't use powers. Yeah. Is Leech, I'm sure there's a Leech few rotated. other ways. Muramasa Blade strips defense powers, so that's like no good, no more. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple, but even just against Outwit, like you're giving everyone adjacent just protected Outwit plus. That's I mean, that's crazy. And just being, like, a, a relatively strong attacker on his own is also great. So immediately my mind goes to, you know, pairing these with, like, the Masters of Evil chases. Oh, also, how could we forget this one? Pegasus Captain America. His yeah, attack ability just... To him, sadly, that really sucks. Kind of, kind of bummed, actually. I'm really mad that, like, instantaneously <laughs> he has a counter, and I'm like, oh, I guess that's good game design. But, man... I don't I need to be a little stupid for a while. Yeah, you got to let him run free or fly yeah. free, I suppose. Yeah, I got to let him spread his wings, you know? Well, for what it's worth, Calder, you know, this is twice, almost twice the point value of Ghost Rider, that and there true. are ways to play around it. I don't want people running around going, oh my gosh, the game is over, this Ghost Rider exists. You can always use various ways of free knockback to get him away from the team. You can always place elevated under him to space out, you know, like now he's on a higher elevation. They're no longer adjacent. You can always do mind control to run him away from the team. He doesn't have any rollouts himself. So like hitting him or repositioning him may end up being tricky if your opponent like really locks in a defensive shell. But there are plenty of ways to get around this. It is just a very, very strong effect that uh, if your opponent's good, they will really utilize. Very, very strong. Very strong. I, yeah, I like him. I'm gonna talk. I'll talk about a, a Twinkie guy now. Chat about. Uh, chat about someone here. We share actually share a first name. One version of me shares a first name with this character. Uh, we'll talk about the Rawhide Kid really quick. Uh, old Rawhide Kid here is a police team player. I just think he has a really cool trait. So fastest draw in the West is probably my favorite. And I hate super senses. Least favorite power on the planet. But I think this is probably the coolest Super Senses ability I've ever seen. So it's called Fastest Draw in the West. Super Senses, when Rawhide Kid uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, deal the attacker damage equal to his printed damage value. Little uh, little Han Solo dodge out of the way, bang, shoot him type, uh, type trick. I really dig it. And then he has you know, damage power, which is I bet you didn't even see the second shot. When he hits, you may choose an unhit opposing character adjacent to a hit character. If you do, you deal that character two damage. So he's just bang, bang. He's just shooting fast on the draw, quick shooting. A really simple, like, 50-point running shot, precision strike piece. He gets flurry down dial, so he's throwing hands later. 
uh, after he's shooting them up, which is really cool. A little, little ballroom brawl here. So I like it. Improved targeting, shoots out of adjacency, which is really cool. So he's a really fun super rare overall. Just hilarious. It's a fun sculpt, too. One of the better it is. Twinkie base yeah. sculpts. I he also so. has the animal keyword, so he can theme with your boy Cap. Oh, also true. Yeah. So I assume most people that are going to be riding wow. horses will also just gain animal. Cap yeah. got it. He's on a Pegasus. This guy, he's on a horse. I want to say there's a Moon Knight on a horse. We saw him. There Does he have a animal? Moon Knight on a horse. He doesn't have animal, actually. That's strange. No. He has Avengers, vehicle, war. He has vehicle. He doesn't get animal, though. Well, Some kind of Rahai animatronic also horse. gets vehicle. He does, yeah. Horses being the vehicle. Yeah, technically. Yeah, horse power. I mean, a vehicle for longer than we've had cars, right? So, I mean, it, it's a just mode weird of transportation. That we, we doubled down on the horseness of this bike. Yeah, that is true. Vehicle. <laughs> That's true. I, the, I will say, probably shout out really quick another cool ability the prime that Scott pulled with the brother voodoo with the make a wish and the monkey's paw curls i won't get into the dial it's a solid dial it's got like a 19 senses and like prop. he's so good dude. but he starts the game with three twisted wish tokens and you free remove a twisted wish if you do you choose one deal an opposing character within range two pen or heal any character three clicks he can do this three times in a game what and then but the second trait so that's make a wish and then the monkey's paw curls if you like know monkey paw lore it kind of twists that's why it's a twisted wish it kind of twists the wish and something bad usually happens so Genius when a twisted style. wish token is removed from brother voodoo after resolutions an opponent may choose one so now your opponent gets to pick place any two characters friendly to their force into each other's squares so you can move my characters around or remove an action token from just any character friendly or opposing so this is gonna be good you know like Okay, I get to do you two pen, but now you get to like free up your heavy hitter or something. It's kind of I don't know I don't know if I want to say it's like fair because you just get an off rip deal two pen, which kind of kills a lot of stuff. Um, but he is a prime, which is cool. And then he's got some cool, uh, like kind of that Captain America effect, um, the Living Legend, where if he dies, you can remove a Twisted Wish. You roll a d six and you heal him, or actually you turn him to the resulting click number, which is actually better. Protected Pulse Wave, and he's got Mind Control Smoke Cloud TK. So this Brother Voodoo is really solid. They just love making good primes of Brother Voodoo for some reason. It's just very consistent. Also, uh, if you remember the old ASM prime, he, he's he was no worm. Way, way too good. <laughs> okay. He might have wish tokens, but he's no worm. He's no worm. <laughs> Wasn't he like 150 worm? points? Yeah, dude. He was so much. <laughs> he was so many points. It's 150 points. With uh, just five or six clicks of super senses, uh, there was I, don't a... know. I played him a ton because uh, what did, he did something where like when you removed all your wish tokens, he just started dealing one unavoidable to everyone around him or something. Yeah, yeah. There was a there was a guy who I believe it was a golden age. It might have been silver age because it's been a while, but he got like eighth at a tournament playing a worm team. And it was all centered around, yeah, just getting him to the point where he's just dealing that free damage, man. He was hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, I think Brother Voodoo is... the Being able to place your opponent's figures in, like, any square of each other is insane. But if you built a team that was just, like, you know, really close together, just all adjacent, being able to do two free pen and then just saying, like, all right, if you switch me, I don't care a ton. That is, uh really good he feels really solid for 45 but i feel like that drawback is going to kind of push people away from building with him i will definitely be a person who tries to make this figure work because i love that i think it's so fun for sure uh the last figure i i really want to get into is it's our, our little orb boy the little uh eyeball man on the motorcycle <laughs> uh so this is I don't know. Scott went off about how he used to be a stunt writer before they rewrote him as like actually maybe there's two different guys that have eyeballs for heads. But I couldn't tell if he was talking about like that being a helmet. But this might not be like, you know, the stunt writer might not be the watcher stolen eye orb that I know. Um, but that's it. Yeah, that's his first trait is the watcher stolen eye, which is just. Orb's attack rolls of 1-1 one, one are critical hits instead of critical misses. So he's his own star, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, when Orb attacks, you may replace one die in his attack roll with a one. So normally you see that with like a six, so you can make it a critical hit. But if you roll a six and a one, he can replace the six with a one, and then that becomes a critical hit, which is pretty hilarious. Once per game, you may choose that a friendly character's critical miss becomes a critical hit. But if you do, Orb can't use this trait this game. He just loses all access to it. But it is, for 45 points, it's just a global once per game. If somebody would critical hit uh, or critical miss, you can make it become a critical hit, which is kind of insane. Yeah, it's kind of insane. (laughs) Really good. If that was like my opening attack and my opponent's, uh, well, with rotation, it won't matter too much anymore, but. I think the way that uh, that trait would work is if the whole Moira Sinister thing was still happening and they tried to make you critical miss, not only would this guy just be amazing against Sinister um, and still technically will be, but yeah, once per game, if you were going to like Alpha and they tried to make you critically miss with the whole Sinister Scarlet Witch shenanigans, you could just basically delete them off the map by making it a critical hit. And then his last trait is Charge Flurry, but only if Orb crossed the rim of elevated terrain. Or he has Charge, period. Flurry, but only if Orb crossed the rim of elevated terrain this turn. He has improved movement over elevated outdoor blocking and through adjacency. So if you charge and he has 8 speed top dial, if you move over up elevated or down elevated, then you can also Flurry with that Charge. And then he has, when Orb attacks, modify his attack plus one for each of the following he moved through this turn. Hindering terrain, blocking terrain, and characters. So, yeah, you can potentially have a 14 attack on this guy. It'd be a little hard to get it all lined up, but it's possible. And then you could potentially have Flurry if, in that hindering, blocking characters, there's also an elevation change. I love that. You got a stunt to do the stunt. I mean, a 14 attack charge. I think it's cool, for like dude. Doing a big trick. That's, yeah. The best I part love is that. a 14 attack. Me of the, uh... the only way you're going to miss is really with a pro- like a, a crit miss. Like, in most situations, you're yeah, going to have to roll true. real low. Yeah, and then also, him having assassin, cosmic, monster, mystical, like, he's got a lot of good keywords here. So, I could definitely see him, like, making some builds. I'm definitely going to try and play him. He sounds like a ton of fun, and... Yeah, you can just never discount uh, abilities that replace dice. Those are some of the strongest in the game. And this one particularly feels like a a pretty solid insurance policy for a critical miss. I know I could have used this in uh, our most recent game, which will be on YouTube shortly. Oh my gosh, no kidding. Jeez. (laughs) It was was brutal. Yeah. I, I like his stunt rider trait, though. It reminds me a lot of the old Captain America's motorcycle. Because that was, if you pass the rim of elevated, you modified, like, your stats plus one. So it was all about, like, jumping over elevated or something. And this is just, like, go through it all. Do it all, man. So it's Evil can evil. Yeah. Yeah, really. It does feel like that, yeah. When does he right. cross into public domain? When does... Is... <laughs> <laughs> when does yeah, Mr. Knievel's question. name go to public domain so when we can get the, iconics? When will the Knievel family let us use his likeness and everything? I think Disney owns the rights to Duke Kaboom. And that's as close as we're getting, for sure, to Evil Knievel. <laughs> I think that's a story joke, but character. it genuinely could be a real character. I know, right? I'm in. Sadly. I mean, is that not just Duke, Duke Nukem's Duke like younger Kaboom. brother, Duke Kaboom? Um... Well, Duke Kaboom, I mean, it's probably the rip of his name for sure. But then also, he is very much just an evil Knievel esque toy, is what Duke Kaboom is in Toy Story oh, 4. Gosh. So, yeah, it's pretty incredible. Don't watch Toy Story 4, though. If you haven't already seen it, you don't need to see it. It's not particularly good. Anyways, um, just saying, he is a stunt writer, evil Knievel esque, except he's Canadian. That's like the kind of the funny joke. Is that how Evil Knievel is all stars and stripes and everything? Duke of Boom is all uh, red, white, but maple leafy. Um, it's kind of funny. Oh, Voiced wait. by Kanye West. Not no, sorry. Uh, what's his name? The one from Matrix. That guy, Lawrence Fishburne. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Neo. He's voiced by Neo. Oh. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, <laughs> Keanu Reeves. I don't know why I said Kanye West. Close enough. A little, right? little Keanu off. Reeves. <laughs> Yeah, they both 
like Keanu on yeah it's like do kaboom it's, in that same line maybe Dick Dastardly and Muttley oh I mean, okay that would actually be kind so of dope, uh, though. he's kind we of got wacky evil can evil ask as got wacky racers I'd die Penelope ah oh, that'd be so dope I would love a wacky racer set unnecessary but i would love it i love it so much well is it time um i think it's time that's what i was about to ask time. we gotta talk about the king man we gotta talk about the king of the vamps so we finally get to see old vlad drac himself dracula he's a rare he's the first rare and i dare i say kicking the rares off to a good start oh yeah so let's you know let's kind of go in he's got three abilities to talk about we can chat three abilities i'll do the simplest i'll do the simplest of one i'll just go down as like powers and stats so very simply he has charge for the most, most of his dial he starts off eight speed 12 attack 18 defense four damage imperv outwit charge no special like no attack power at all he rolls onto some invuln later and then on his last three clicks he gets some blades he gets blades on his last four, but on his last three, he gets Battle Fury with regen. So this is like Mad Dracula. You've damaged him. He's he's angry. And then on his very last click, well, actually, the cooler part is that what he heals to. Let's not just talk about what he gets damaged to. Obviously, he has steel energy. He is a wild dial, a vampire dial. But he has three clicks he can heal up. So he's overall on like an 11-click dial, I want to say, which is so sick. Um, he heals up to the Impaler is his special speed power, which gives him charge, flurry, stealth. I think if he was started with stealth, he could have like guaranteed getting to those clicks a little easier. But I still like seeing the charge flurry stealth with he gets exploit and invincible on those clicks. And his top dial is a 10, 13, 25. So he's a, a 13 attack, 5 damage with exploit with charge flurry. And then he is just a 20 defense invincible, which is so, so sick. He has two targets. So he's got that 4 damage top dial. And then he can get that five when he heals all the way up. So the two targets is great with that. He's got some outwit because he's king of the vampires, baby. He's a genius. But uh, do you guys want to talk a little bit more about what else uh, old Dracula here does? I already I already like the dials. Yeah, so fun. Yes, I do. The king of the vampires, man, is so cool. So he starts the game on click four. He has steel energy. When he uses it, he may heal past his starting line. The coolest part of this figure, in my opinion, is that when Dracula or a friendly Wheels of Vengeance number 9 vampire KOs an opposing character, after resolutions you may generate a vampire on its starting click in the square the KO'd character last occupied. So if Dracula goes in and gets one kill, he's generating a vampire. Now let's say that vampire also kills something. They're generating another vampire, and so on. So in a way, you have an extended vulture. <laughs> it's a lot more convoluted yeah. and takes more actions but the fact that like with one good sequence of attacks like you could you know kill two three things and now all of a sudden you have these vampires in their face dracula might be a bit behind them it might be harder to position next to him i love that there's no like point requirement or anything like if you kill a construct boom you now have vampire spotlight vampire stops high <laughs> Oh, that is true. Man, that's actually so, hilarious. That's very vampire accurate, stop too, because I remember when the DC Universe Vampire series happened and Hal tried to defend himself with a construct of a shield and a vampire bit it, and then it turned into a vampire shield construct. So, into yeah. a person. <laughs> so I, I really like that. I think that's a lot of fun. And uh, it may add some like you know kind of stealthiness to actually taking dracula down because you're going to have to get through those people now so if you can get access to the right target you can really start popping off with it and so, uh to borrow yeah. a term that whiz kids used probably two years ago that's a very intra set kind of design because Ooh. it works with inside the set but here's the the opposite that i can't remember what they called it uh, interset yeah, in, interset and extra set, out, outro set. I no, don't it's know. inter and intra set. I don't know. Inter, Any... like, intra set is inside. Inter is like connecting. Okay, this okay, is this is sure. an inter set intersecting set. Uh, so this power works with a lot of stuff, a lot of golden age stuff, a lot of stuff in this this set specifically, but then a lot of like just stuff in general. So. The scent of fresh blood is when Dracula damages one or more opposing characters 
After resolutions, choose up to two other friendly characters that can use steel energy. This turn they have free, have speed, move. So when I the very first day I saw this, I instantly thought of Wendigo, the two yeah. by two. Oh sure. Um, yep. Because I was like, ah, that's what he needs, more free move. Uh, but even beyond that, there's a lot of traded steel energy stuff. I mean, that Ghost Rider that we talked about earlier. Um, if you're playing like a 400, 500 point game and you play these two together, that gives that Ghost Rider a ton more movement. Uh, obviously, it works really well with the vampires that he makes as well. It gives them like a pseudo half speed charge. So they get to like free half speed move and then make it an attack if they want. Um, but yeah, there's just an endless number of things that this works with. Also, there's equipable steel energy. So pretty much anyone that you want to combo with this specific power is possible. Uh, the Is it all the carnages that use it? I mean, like, Necron has traded steel energy, right? Like yeah, All the Black Lanterns. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the Black Lanterns. Yeah, all the Carnages. Yeah, okay. Necron being able to, like, be on a stealth click, still move, and then take a shot. Or, I mean, just, you know, sidestep and then an additional four square movement if he's at, like, 75 or 40. Um, yeah, just oh. kind of insane the amount of stuff that this will actually work with. And uh, I can't wait to try and break it. I know, I don't know if it'll be yeah. breakable, but that's definitely something that I'm going to attempt. Well, I think there's some yeah, cool things that you can do. Five points. That's probably the biggest thing is that he costs a lot. But I mean, yeah. you can do it. You can also, put him on a team. I think yeah, Pulp, he, he might be a lot of play. Like, I think that's really one sick. Of your main attackers, because he, he has to hit yeah. for that to trigger. Um, you got to want to keep him alive. You got to get him out there. Exactly, yeah. He's got to get to top dial because you want to have that 13 for 5 with Flurry. Uh, you want that stealth 20 invincible. I think a, a really cool combo that you can work with them, like immediately my mind went to Genesis, uh, the grand prize one, because she says that when uh, you use blades, you do your minimum damage plus 1. So now you can guarantee like the vampires that you spawn are dealing 4, and if you tack oh. in Scott Porter on a theme team, now your vampires can just be 11 for 4. And if the vampires can kill things, you can just keep that chain going. Granted, you have limited actions, but if you could pop out, you know, just a couple vampires and then you're free moving them after Dracula kills something, so probably only the one, you can just put that in their face and say, like, okay, break away from this, deal with this. So I really like that. I think uh, also, like, Scott Porter taking the vampire brood keyword and having vampire Scott Porter is that's, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, I think overall really solid figure. I like it a lot. I'm interested in playing it. I, like I think he'll probably be more workable in pulp, obviously. Yeah. But uh, I don't think he's, I'll probably try and play him in modern too. I don't think he's going to see a ton of play in modern. I think it's, I'm not going to say he's like not good enough for modern, but I'm going to say like, we don't see a ton of 125 point figures in modern. So just yeah. on that alone, but yeah, I think inside of, uh, in pulp and then maybe there's even like a theme, like a silver age theme with monsters. I could definitely see that. Or, I mean, he's got good keywords. He's got ruler past mystical monster. There's a lot of stuff to work with. Definitely. And for those of you keeping up at home, you know, we are in a contentious battle for the biggest Dracula fan. Obviously, we all want to be the biggest Dracula fan, but there can be only one. And the way that we've decided to find the biggest Dracula fan is we're going to let Dracula choose. So when we, you know, get Wheels of Vengeance in hand and we do our unboxing, whoever pulls the first Dracula will be the official biggest Dracula fan. The highest honor in Dial H history. Ah. The other two will con begrudgingly concede whoever uh, whoever those two may be. Ian uh, Calder, <clears throat> um, they will they will have to begrudgingly concede to the the rightful choice and throne of greatest Dracula fan. The biggest crime that you could commit is disagreeing with Dracula. So though it may hurt, you do have That's to true. let That's Dracula true. choose. Dracula, he's always right. 
I trust I trust Dracula <laughs> to make the right decision. So, in I do too. Not in saying Dracula what that's going to be in Dracula trust. Um, so we know, but now we kind of just want to run down uh, the set list really quickly. I'm not going to say everything, but I don't know if you guys have any highlights. I have a pretty big yes. highlight: the fact that Cap Wolf is going to be a chase. That we are getting uh, one of the most wacky versions of Captain America made again 12 years later. I'm very, very excited about. So Cap Wolf being a chase is cool. Spider Knight is also cool, who I assume is going to be a mounted chase. Um, I own the old Spider Knight from Superior Foes, and I always liked him. I thought he was fun. So this is cool. Um, But yeah, that's like the biggest thing I got from the set list. I was like, oh, that is so sick. That Cap Wolf is coming back. I thought we were going to be like, like, I was like, there's no way a Captain America fits in this set. And that's fine. We had a lot of great ones this year. We had some of the best ones ever this year. And they're like, no, we're going to sneak in one more for you, Calder. And it's a chase, uh, which is really funny. So I'm excited for that a lot. Um, Just offer it for the set list. Anything else that was really cool that stood out to you guys about the set list? I mean, I we've already seen Ghost Surfer, uh, Namor, right. and Wolverine. Like so, we've seen a lot of the chases, and I loved all the sculpts. Uh, I th- I will say, even though I want it, I think the Wolverine sculpt is one of the more lacking chase sculpts. But uh, that's just because Namor and Ghost Surfer are they're hard crazy. to outdo. Like Namor's literally <sighs> yeah. a, a shark jumping out of the water that he's mounted on he's riding camo yeah <laughs> <laughs> put a little crown on him. wasn't that an anime camo rider right oh so. i think you're right yeah <laughs> old yeah. camo rider yeah, yeah i know this one <laughs> it's the bicyclist guy um i'm i think uh i don't know what ghost panther 2099 is but i'm down for all 2099 figures because how ridiculous they are so Ghost Panther 2099 and Ghost Rider 2099, I welcome. 100%. Cool. I really like uh, Vengeance being on the set list. I think that's going to be pretty cool. We have not seen him in clicks, I don't believe. Unless I... Am I forgetting one? Doesn't sound familiar. I don't I think, think so, so yeah, but he's like, you know... He's a real, like, beefed up looking Ghost Rider. He's got, like, spurs and bones <laughs> i don't know he looks really cool hard to describe is that, is that the cowboy is that what that one is like the uh the sam elliott character is that what who vengeance is no he's is i even a, i really uh, don't know much hurt. about him but i looked oh, up okay. like a Never picture mind. of him and i was like whoa so he's not the just kind of real goofy looking not, he looked like he's strong okay Big guy. cool um, the other one we already guy. saw the sculpt for, but I am so interested to see the dial, especially because it doesn't have a split line. The Cathon, oh, I just yeah. I want to know what he does. Like with with what we saw for Doomsday in like the Death of Superman set, him getting a six printed damage and just wild stats and stop clicks. I'm hoping it's that this Cathon gets a damage. similar treatment. That'd be pretty sweet. Where is he at on the the set list? He is zero forty two. 042. So is that making him a rare? He's a super rare. Super rare? Okay. Huh. Um, another one, too, because I've been playing Midnight Suns on and off is Lilith. I don't know if she's been made, but she's like the big bad villain of that game. So I'm curious to see what they do with her. But uh, admittedly, okay. I don't know much about that character either, but I think she looks cool. You know, some characters that we have seen the sculpts for. Who's that? Who's that? That's these uh the Ooh, legacy ah. card list. <laughs> oh, 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 see, I was about to go there. Very good, Simeon. Very good. Uh, yeah, you want to run down the legacy list? This might be one of my favorite legacy lists we've gotten in a yeah. while. I really like it. We've had some I really like it a lot. Hit and miss kind of legacy lists, and then like, I think one of the worst ones for me was Wonder Woman eighty, just because it was oh read it was yeah it was just a it's bunch definitely. of Wonder Woman picks which. I would have been happy with one or two, but they all just felt too similar. But uh, enough of that. This is a very interesting, very kind of random, but makes sense legacy card list. So from the Deadpool set, number 043, Black Talon, the knighted rooster man himself. Uh, From Amazing Spider-Man 034, Satana Hellstrom. From the Mighty Thor, number 053, Hela. 
the original grave marker lady. Not really. Uh, that one that was in uh, War of the Realms that made graves. Uh, Secret Wars Battle World 056, Witch Queen Le Fay, Deadpool X Force 059, Hammer, Secret Wars Battle World 042, Jennifer Kale, Earth X 054, Daredevil. Yes. And then Amazing Spider Man 047, Man Thing, and Howard the Duck. Uh, Let's go! Avengers Let's go! 049, Two Gun Kid, uh, and then 20, the 2099 set. What a deep cut. Ghost 004 Ghost Rider. Deep cuts here. Um, this list is also missing. On 2099 Ghost Riders. That's this is so missing cool. AVAS Iron Man, right? Mm. Uh, there's two. If you're, yes, if you're in the HC Realms one, there's also the ASM Ghost Rider Super Rare, the oh, Chase yeah. Iron Man, and then the. So it's missing those two. Oh, so so the yeah. Jack it, it doesn't have those. The it's ones that we like, know. Okay. Yeah, or it the posted ones them shown. earlier. So the ones we, yeah, the ones we already saw, it just has the dials for, and then it yeah. says all the ones we don't have Civil are listed War, later. So there's Jack O' Lantern. It's Civil War, okay. That's that's such a weird pick to me. I'm Civil War, Jack. I get like ahead. the Halloween vibe, but it's so interesting. <laughs> all these years later, I finally am glad that I bought into that set. <laughs> I love that the coolest thing Jack O' Lantern does, just like what he does in Civil War, is die. He's oh, just yeah. explode. <laughs> but he comes um, back. Always to a life. fun effect to have. That is true. That is true. Yeah, that was good old Frank Castle killed him and um someone else. Do you remember who it sewers. was? It was like the jester or something. It was yeah. something like a weird jester costume. I don't know if that's his name, but it was like someone who's like lame. And I was like, Yeah, that it's was the Marvel being like, Yeah, Frank, you can go No, it wasn't Diablo. It was like he literally had he looked like the old school version of Steppenwolf. Like little elf boy oh, Steppenwolf okay. is what he yeah. looks like. Diablo doesn't um, hang out. Looks so very much. silly. Diablo's good. Yeah. <laughs> he has potions. Well, is Diablo is I got cool? potions. I don't I don't do that whole sewer thing. <laughs> um no, these picks are so sick. Great. I, I will say I'm confused by Hammer. I get that he is riding a vehicle of sorts. I think that's how he gets it. But Black Talon is so dope. Man thing and Howard the Duck, personally, is absolutely my favorite. I love we're getting more Earth X characters and we get Earth X Daredevil. That is so sick. The Daredevil Two pick is best. A hundred percent. Back on the motorcycle. Yeah. So fitting. That figure was a ton of fun back in his day. I I'm Jenna, excited to see what they do with him. He's probably say, my number one uh, pick. Jennifer Kale is wild to me. As someone who played literally so much, like I probably played three. Uh, I'd probably say, yeah, 10 a day. It's like 30 Battle Royales of Secret Wars Battle World. Oh, man. Now I'm me sorry. owning two Jennifer Kales has really uh, has really gone through the roof here. So I'm super curious as to what she is possibly going to do and if she'll have her 33-point line or yeah. if they're going to be not as weird in the weird world. My favorite is obviously Witch Queen Le Fay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I loved playing the... The, like uh, WWE stuff with her and using right. like all the speed powers, the slingshot, the nimble, like all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what point value you somebody asked in our Discord what like though. point value I would you want. And I think so much. I think like half price is about right for for Witch Queen. Yeah, just because, and she like, still has all the speed powers. Well, if if she had like a stop click from her secondary click but yeah getting knocked for like six or seven when all you have oh, is mastermind hurts. is really rough and that's what would always sure. happen it was always just like i'm gonna out with the mastermind and then i'm gonna hit you for like a ton and just you just go right past all your impervious clicks to like bad bad stuff yeah i played her a handful of times and that was pretty much the story every time but that first turn where it's like yeah i'm gonna charge flurry force blast <laughs> you know, just everything. So you would, yeah, you'd perplex up stats, charge, flurry, well, sidestep nimble, then charge, flurry, use slingshot to knock them back, like, still adjacent to you, and then slingshot gives you a free attack. So it was, like, one of the only characters that could move almost, like, all the way across the board and get uh, three attacks off on their own. Oh, Ghost Rider 2014? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Uh, I want to say another interesting one on the list is Two Gun Kid. 
Uh, way back when Avengers Forever was coming out, I like I always read the storylines and prep for the events, except for X of Swords. I never got around to that one. But when I was reading that, you know, Two Gun Kid was like a, a mainstay in the story. So I was like, ah, maybe I should pick one of these up and like prep for that. And uh, I did. That was like, you know, over a year ago at this point now. And uh, gosh, that was a while ago, huh? But uh, it never happened. And now he gets a legacy card. So that's like a, a gamble that paid off for me in the long run, which is cool. So I dig that. I don't think I had money on any of these being paid. Like... Definitely not Jennifer Kale, not Daredevil. Uh, I think we had mentioned Man Thing and Howard the Duck like a long time ago, as far as like iconic sculpts. Yeah, I I think I would have struck out with this set. I didn't really do anything like legacy card searching wise for this one because this was one where it's like, how can you even narrow this down? Like Wheels of Vengeance, like you could do anything, and this list says that yeah, we did anything. So <laughs> glad I sat this one out. Yeah, probably a good idea. I'm glad I own and have owned the Man Thing Howard the Duck. I'm so God, I'm so excited. I, I can't a wait. A lot of people were upset about the the defend like Avengers Defenders War Ghost Rider not being on this list because that is a very good. That's sculpt. fair. But man, oh, yeah, ASM is just the most iconic Ghost Rider to go with. 100%. In my opinion, like I think that was the right call. And they made a lot of Ghost. I mean, they made two. Right, twenty nine to nine, and then ASM. So yeah, and we did get we yeah. got two Ghost Riders. I will say Iron Man does feel a little out of place, especially when you know that he's like a picked legacy card. I think at least it's like the cool black and gold, so he doesn't feel totally wrong in this set. But it was definitely like, a, well, this is the card I want to make. I'm like, oh, it's, I guess we it's can't put it in Notorious. A vehicle. It's. Kind of, it's I mean, kind it of is. Like a yes. of vengeance. I suppose. I guess um i think hammer is the one i i'm caught off guard the most i think witch queen and jennifer kale they go hand in hand because they were both foes in weird world but to me hammer is like yeah i guess he's riding something hella is cool i think if they do like more grave markers that's cool for hella satana hellstrom asm good pick solid pick i wonder if that's just because they made her brother and we're like ah, i guess we'll make you too but we're gonna <laughs> legacy you your brother gets cool glow effects, but you don't. Um, and then, yeah, Daredevil is such a sick pick. Such an out of... That is also kind of an out-of-nowhere pick. Like, I get that he has is driving a bike, right? Like, that he's riding one. Yeah. But, like, yeah. he's got nothing to do with no. Ghost Rider lore no. whatsoever. Well, he's like Jack-O-Lantern, you know? right? You know, you got the he, pumpkin yeah. on Jack He is kind of just Halloween. Uh, I mean, he's purple. got, like... He really looks like Daredevil. Though. Like he really does. Like, he's just in a red costume. He does have like the big mouth and eyes that look like a jack o' lantern, but it is just like kind of like a red costume with like a popped collar. And that is that is very much this Earth X Daredevil. Where does Black Talon fit in? That are the living Dragon. dead. And yeah, he's living right. on that Black island. Black Talon. Yeah, the living Oa. And like, is he is he on the island or whatever? Black Talon. Yeah, Deadpool goes out and like visits him. I believe. Okay. Or maybe Dracula visits him. It's been a while since I've read it, but I remember being like, oh, that's who Black Talon is. Okay. okay. Then there, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I just so. never bothered with the character outside of like playing him. It's fair. He was a, uh, like, so like the 2014 Deadpool set is one of my favorite sets of all time. So it's just so sick getting He Black was Talon really good, back. too. He was so he was good. Yeah. 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 So we'll see if he maintains his friendly mind control. Or if they're like, yeah, that's a little too good. Maybe we should stop with they that. They took we'll it see. away from Mole Man, so... They it's did, the, it, yeah. Which it's is... one of the few characters that I just never owned. Like, he would always be on top tournament lists and stuff, and, like, whenever people were playing Golden Age or Bronze Age before, like, Silver was a thing, um, they were always talking about, like, pairing him with stuff, and I was like, yeah, he's got, like, a cool effect. I just don't want to own one. I don't want to buy one. That's fair. That's pretty fair. But overall, I would say this is like gold star. Like, I would say best legacy picks of the year, honestly. Maybe not. Well, Batman Team Up is so stacked. But Batman, Batman Team Up had. You know, I mean, I would say we'll, we'll have, have to see, see what they all end up we'll doing. Yeah. But so far, for just character choice wise, I think this is the best legacy picks of the year for purely who they chose, what figures they chose to remake. I think I'd agree I with think you. Avengers and Batman are really, really strong, but this is like definitely legacy picks of the year easily. Yeah. 
I think Batman team up had some duds, but uh, they just had some like really strong ones and some very cool ones as well. But this list is like, this is what I want from legacy card lists. I know you already kind of hit on this where it's like, you know, it's a bit random and you know, we get like an iconic ghost rider that had like an actual legacy in the game. I love seeing that. And then, yeah, you know, just kind of the looser theme rather than, Hey, we're filling out a sub theme. Like, just getting <laughs> Daredevil back because he has a motorcycle and Jack-o'-lantern because he has the pumpkin head. Like, that's that's the way it should right. be done. I will say that is hilarious. Like, his exploding pumpkin head. I know we talked about it once, but, like, that is really funny. As just, like, a... Oh, and I mean, yeah. It's just hilarious. It's just Playing hilarious. Playing him in multiples could be pretty fun. Also, I feel so uh, sad now that, like, I definitely used to own him because I used to own the full Civil War set and I culled it, like, forever ago. Besides, sadly, all the pro cap stuff. So I got rid of all my ant, uh, my pro registration. I kept all my anti registration. And he is, uh, he's missing pro registration keyword. So rip pro registration. But uh, yeah, I sold him like years ago, which is so sad. Now I've got to go track one down. I, I bought into that set like after WizKids had said, like, you can sell this without running a tournament or whatever. Ooh. Not knowing that there were like no chases in the set or anything like it was just oh so i don't yeah. remember what i pulled but i remember no one wanted to trade for it so i still have a bunch of stuff and i'm sure i have at least one jack lantern there um here's a fun thing so nightmare we kind of talked before the show nightmare not a great figure um by by any stretch he's like really overcosted, but he has a special power and a trait enter sandman obviously a famous, uh -huh. famous song, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. A special power, Infinite Dreams, a slightly less famous song, but still an Iron Maiden song. So obviously, Inter Sandman, that's the Metallica one. And then, uh, yeah, right. Infinite Dreams. So odd. Just, <laughs> I don't know why. I wonder, yeah, I wonder if that's the. Uh, we're going there, for some. more examples of that in the set, though, right? Like. That was the first one I noticed, just because Inner Sandman's such like a obvious. Uh, it's just like the phrasing man, on that is man just very things, obvious. You got another thing coming. Has to be like that's from something, right? Man, things you've got another thing coming. Well, Hand that's Ninja has night moves somewhere, which <laughs> very different. Kind oh, of, really? Very different kind of that's song, hilarious. but still a song. Yeah. What about what about the classic hit Moon Bob powered Seeger. by Kanju? I thought you were gonna say multiple personalities, one oh, horse. Yes. Come on, Ian. That's clearly <laughs> the classic hit of there. Oh, you mean uh, you mean the classic song Netheranium Trident? I love Jeez. yeah. That yeah, is man. a one. classic. Got that one on really repeat. One. Call me Death Rider. <laughs> I'm sure oh, Sweeping Chain like Sweeping throat? Chain's gotta be it. A song somewhere. Settle it with violence. Is that not a oh, song? Oh, settle it's it with violence be. is a song. Yeah. yeah oh, this okay. is a good Here one. Go. Enhanced camera targeting. That was a classic. <laughs> Back in the nineties, dude. Going oh my to... god. Oh, of Wolf and Man, of course. Does anyone have Werewolves of London? No, I looked. No one has Werewolves of London. <laughs> That's so good. sad. Yeti is angry again. That's a song. Yeah. <laughs> Raining blood. Fight fire with fire. That's just like a classic phrase, I guess. I am Iron Man. Uh, mm. I mean, hey, just yeah, I, right? just Iron Man. But technically, yeah, the like, I am. That's the. the I am Iron, Iron Man. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to hear that nowadays. Just whispering about sharing and stuff i don't know yeah man they could have called his exploding pumpkin head like smashing pumpkins or something they could have oh, added, they could have gave him another trait that smashing was smashing pumpkins, pumpkins. Oh, they're another pumpkin like character in the set let's check the set list again oh we gotta have a smashing pump come on come on this horseman's no. dial has not been shown yet but there's a chance I'm there so pumped for that oh that'd be sick Headless Horseman is up there for me for like high wants. I want him to be so cool. He doesn't have to be good. He just has to be cool. That's all that yeah. matters. As long he's as he's already, cool. he's already cool because he looks cool. Yeah, on the so, realms I'm of pumped. death. That sounds like 
It sounds like a Hammerfall song. Okay. Maybe. Uh, yeah, that is Beyond the Realms of Death, Judas Priest. Okay. Ah, there you go. Huh. This Overall, is, this is I'd say... I'm going to keep looking through this all cool, yeah. dude. I like it. <laughs> Find them. Uh, I'm not going to make the we... listener listen to me try and figure them all out, but I'm going to keep looking because... No, Nightmare yeah. was just like the obvious one as I was like scrolling. Yeah, the Ender but... Man is super obvious. Oh, Vampire has uh, Raining Blood. That's Tina yeah. Turner, right? It's raining it's blood. It's raining blood. It's oh raining gosh. blood. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. There's also uh, <laughs> there's Modred the Mystic, and he has the Wizard as a trait, which could just be that he's a wizard, but that's a Uriah Heep album. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were going to say that he's a Or is that? It might just be a song. Yeah. Wizard. It's a song. Yeah, my bad. I mean, there's. Yeah. There's a. The there's that album been... cover where he's like on the. He's like on the rocks, like pointing at the wizard. I don't know the name of that album, but that's what I thought it was, but no. Cemetery Gates is also definitely a song. Yeah. Sadly, Quack Shot is not. Dude, I so wish it was. We could make it one. Bang, 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 bang. Gunshot, yeah. Quack. Something like that. <laughs> hilarious. Instant classic. Let's, uh, we'll talk to, what is it, Seth Rogen? Seth Green, one of the Seths, voices Howard What's the Duck that? nowadays, technically. One of those guys, yeah. We'll ask him, see if we can lend some vocals here. But overall, looking at the set list, Seeing Scott crack open in each booster, seeing the legacy card list, this set has easily one of the best, most cohesive themes, and that is spooky season. Like, we're getting into October. <laughs> yeah. I'm honestly, I don't feel too bad. There's a lot of people being mad about a set already stealing thunder, they would say, from Notorious. But you know what? Someone just served you your meal. You got a steak. You're ready to eat it. And he's like, yo, man, here's your dessert. Eat it whenever you're ready. But just saying, dessert's right there, bro. That's how it's I feel also about a steak. it. I'm like, <laughs> it's also and it's also a steak also, it's also you were, awesome you were a very smart man and you ordered a second steak instead of something sweet <laughs> yeah good again what a cool guy um so I, I love this set it's so cohesive it has a great set list it has a great vibe it has a great feel i can't wait to start cracking open boosters in a halloween ish pre-release era i also yeah. love that it comes out the eighth a little, a little birthday set for me kind of so I'm excited. I really, I really like Notorious. Well, I do like Notorious, but I really like Wheels of Vengeance. I easily think it's one of the I see coolest sets. You started sets. eating your it, steak before you finished your previous steak there. <laughs> By mentioning I'm ready Notorious, to eat, I'm just ready to eat this steak. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm ready to eat this new steak that's being hand delivered here soon. So I love it. I love the vibe of it. I love the feel. I like how each booster feels like because there have been sets in the past where you open it and you're like, is this? Is this a Captain America set? Are we sure? Like, doesn't feel that way. Uh, and this set is like, yeah, this is a Ghost Rider set. This is a spooky season set. So I like it. It feels great. It feels awesome. It looks awesome to open. And I'm excited for it. It's just it's just really cool. I love the vibe. I love spooky season. So I'm excited for it. Any final I'm on thoughts, the board gems? That. I like that. Agree with everything you said. Yeah. I, I'm excited. Uh, pre-releases should be kicking off, I think, the 28th-ish. So, like, literally right before Halloween. And then, yeah, um, November November 8th, I think, is, yeah, the actual release, like you said. So, it's a full release, yeah. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun right. to have some, uh, yeah, easy Halloween themes. Watch the themes. Ghost Rider trilogy and play some Wheels of Oh, Benjamin. yeah, we kind of have to watch the Ghost Rider trilogy, of course. Uh, I mean, I'm duh. the only one who can walk in both worlds. All right, that's a song too, right? Uh, uh, it is true. now, I think. John. Uh, all right, let's go ahead. My name. <laughs> Jeez. Let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions here and finish the episode off. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Super Cab 007 asks. Now, sadly, this question was asked at the start of the week, so it's a bit void now but is there a twinkie slash peanut legacy that you would like in wheels of vengeance and what would you like to see come back so we'll say what's a what's a twinkie slash peanut base you wish they would have included in the set and one that you wished would have gotten a legacy since now we know 
what all of them are, are already. A great question. I mean, right I would, off so, the I would say for, for Twinkie Base, just to give you guys some time to think, um, the rest of the Pegasus crew, Cap isn't the only one on a Pegasus. He leads Spider-Man, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and Wolverine to go save Thor. So I would have actually really liked to see them since Spider-Man was made in War of the Realms, so I guess you could skip him. But it would have been cool to get, like, a generic Pegasus that you could have put Spidey on. And then, like, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Wolverine. Those would have been really cool to get in the main set. That's what I, I guess, would have thought would have been cool. To just fully round out the five horsemen who've punched Apocalypse, as Danny dubs them. But what about you guys for, like, main set? I think uh, Iron Man using his rocket rollerblades would have been really fun sculpt. I, don't, I still don't think we've ever yeah. gotten that, but um, someday, maybe. I'm really drawing okay. a blank on this. The only like double bases that are coming to mind for me are all DC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I also there. I thought of like a couple DC ones that would have been awesome to have in this set, and then I was like, oh, so, not uh, not a double base, but an iconic figure in a bad way that would have been funny to get a legacy would have been the shield space rig chase from Nick Fury. I'm so shield. yeah, yeah. They had just legacy yeah. all of yes. the the Nick Fury agents that shield chases. <laughs> that would have been a, like so uh, many people would have been mad. That would have been awesome. They are literally like the cheapest chases in like ever made. Well, they Avengers are, they Sky are right Cycle. Now. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Yeah. Cards, Here's the hit legacy. Yeah. All right, listener, you hear it here first. Ooh. You got to go buy Sky Cycle, Caps Motorcycle. Got to buy multiple Shield Space Rigs, of course. And then Kang's Time Chair, Thanos Throne. Got to get them. Yeah, the Time Toilet. I get a legacy. The, the Time, time toilet. toilet. I own that one. That was the first. Uh, <laughs> no, that was that was the the only chase I pulled out of that set. That was Nick Fury, Agents of Shield. When did that come out? That was like the only like the third or second chase I had ever pulled. It was like that's it was a real rough one. So bad. So yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh one it, it's like not as a chase, it's the Tesseract. <laughs> yeah, kinda. <laughs> like that's what it felt like. Well, it just I think they were so like not impactful because there's just like nothing on it. You know, you're pulling a chair, like it's Thanos' chair, but it's a chair, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which, I think um, um, for an iconic figure that I would have liked to see, and it's not exactly fitting, but because Iron Fist is in the set, the Power Man and Iron Fist Secret Invasion duo, I always had a ton ton of fun playing them. I love Iron Fist. It was just a really cool duo figure, so not quite a peanut base, but, you know, a little bit. And then in that same set as that. well, the Mephisto, who was 145 points and had 11 attack, 1 damage. I would have loved to see somebody try to legacy that and like make it, yeah, you know, cool. A great sculpt. I do like we finally get an Iron Fist to go with our Avengers sixty Luke Cage. That is super nice. He was he was getting a little lonely being all by himself <laughs> there. So I'm glad that he finally gets a little Danny Rand as his buddy, which is cool. I think a legacy. If I had to choose a legacy pick, highest one like for real, not the Shield Space Rig, uh, would be the Red Hulk Spirit of Vengeance. That would have been so Ooh. dope. Yeah, a pick, right. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a really good one. That was a con in your store. It should be yeah. allowed. I want it to be allowed. What about you, Simeon? Is there anything you'd wish they would have made, or <sighs> wish you would have got a legacy? Well, the the Iron Man doesn't make a ton of sense, but it would have been cool if we got like any of the other chases from that set as well, because I I liked all those chases from Avengers Assemble. Um, I actually really really like the Danny Catch. LE where he's popping a wheelie. That was like yeah. the first LE I ever got. Yeah. Was that I, one? I really liked that one when it came out. I played it a lot. I liked the sculpt. Um oh, and then I guess one that kind of makes sense, but I I'm glad they didn't go with. Uh somebody on Facebook said they really should have legacied and fixed the two by two ghost rider, the mammoth ghost rider. Oh yeah, Ooh, that would have been cool. Okay. I, I was like, well, that makes a ton of sense, but I'm glad they didn't do a recent convention exclusive because even it though I like own two of those, 80, 80 bucks. yeah, but it would have been cool. To be fair, in that would have been Silver cool. Age. I actually would be fun. Uh, he can pilot a Ghost Rider. 
<laughs> oh, geez. oh wait, no, I think it's a single base character, so never mind. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Tyler M asks, listening to the last episode, if you guys had to design a raid boss figure slash set, what would it look like? Hmm. Okay. Well, right off that the bat, is tough. I think you have to, I think you can do like make game modes with and without it, like where you just fight him and where you don't, but like some kind of like thematic rules, you know. Uh, Galactus, like the OG one, had the twenty-click like timer dial. That was a lot of fun. So some kind of mechanic like that, where there's like scenario play, but also just have like the raid boss figure be good enough to where you can just fight it and it's still fun. You know, remove like the convoluted aspects of it. For me personally, my raid boss set, I would love to see like a pack that came with you know a few Green Lanterns, like maybe like Kilowog, and I don't know. Maybe one of the main lanterns as well, but then you fight like a juiced up parallax, and he's like a two by two sculpt Ooh. behind the lantern, like drawing all the power from it. I think that would be really cool. So you know, kind of the people that he killed along the way to get that power. Maybe you fight him like with the rest of the core. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I just love the green lanterns. Alternatively, I think if you really wanted to lean into like the scenario play aspects of it doing like a Gotham city has been like taken over, like include a map, include some of the villains. And then uh, maybe like the two by two could be multiples of the villains on the base and they can, mm, you know, team do base action. Okay. There. Yeah. Kind of like a team base dealio, but uh, yeah, I, I just think, um, I mean, you could really do anything with these and just make it in a way where scenario play is optional. Because if you just want to put it on the board and fight against it, it's still good enough to do that. But if you want to add a little more flair to it, you get some scenario style stuff in there too. Oh yeah, the like big rule sheets that was like practically its own game for Galactus and the Spectre and stuff like that were really cool. Added a lot of layers of complexity to these raid boss kind of stuff. Um, I. I like the idea of like a a raid boss figure being more of like a team base kind of thing or being like um multiple figures on a single base. So yeah, whether that's like the Sinister Six or um Masters of Evil or like whatever, I think that'd be for me personally that'd be cooler than trying to pick like one villain that should be able to like hold their own cuz Thanos always makes sense. He's always like a cool one. Same with Darkseid. But at the end of the day, they're just like this big bruiser kind of dude, at least on like the hero clicks table. Whereas if you had like scenario play for Thanos or Darkseid, like you would have to be able to like bring in like their minions because that's how like they initially fight. And then when like they actually have to step in, it's like they should both have like a 15 attack, 12 damage kind of like situation where it's like if he hits you, you will die. Like, that's just the game. I definitely want, like, the boss fights to be like, I delete you. Like, when I look at you, I delete you. But you need to have thousand-something point teams. So, you know, you can feel not too bad about just getting stuff, like, deleted left and right. I don't know. I don't know who's, like, the good boss. You guys already kind of said ones I would like. The Green Lantern one's a good pick. Thanos was one that I would definitely would have chosen in the past. I think. Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, uh, that is a boss fight that I've done before. It doesn't really make sense, though. No one has ever, like, there's giant Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. We're all going to fight. No one actually You know, like, that's like, not actually. And... Yeah, when, when the only time he's giant, he's, like, you know, turning a certain type of people inside out and exploding them while the comedian just kind of giggles. So, like, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan's not really a boss, like, not really a boss fight type character. So, I don't know. I think we maybe get, uh, a villain who could like grow and change sizes. Like maybe they have like a one by one and a two by two. Okay. And like, you know, it's kind of like a video game where, oh, we're on the final boss. Oh, you KO'd him. And then bigger, badder version of the boss comes out. Yeah. I maybe also, something like that. I really liked the, uh, yeah. the Turtles Unplugged bosses where it was like the flashing red. Ooh. Like as far as like a boss aspect. I if that was added to like a two by two dial, like so like twenty five clicks or whatever instead of twelve, um, I could see it getting really hard to 
to take out somebody. Like, if the Living Tribunal, you, like, get him all the way down to his, like, KO click, and then his, like, flashing red trait kicks in, and he just goes back to top dial, and you have to do it all over again, that would actually Ooh, okay. make him pretty terrifying. Actually, it would be insane. Yeah, I think... I'm just going to say I like your guys' picks. I can't... I really can't think of something right now, sadly. Maybe maybe I want King Kong to be my boss fight character. Make Just make King Kong ridiculous. Have him be our, our boss fight. Dude. I'm into that. Yeah, that's what I'll... I'll do. That's what, that'll be my cop-out. Um, yeah. Just Brad Chainsaw Megs Roche asks, what kind of coke do you each prefer? God, Brad, like, ugh. Well, fine, I'll read it how you type it. What kind of coke do you each prefer? Coca-Cola, Orange Fanta, Dr. Pepper... Big Red, Mountain Dew, Barks Root Beer, or RC Cola? Big uh, Red. We tier list this. this is hilarious. Uh, I'm not going to tier. I'm not going to tier. I can, this. I Big can Red is the name I've heard a long time. S tier Dr. Pepper. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Coca Cola, S tier. Um, Controversial, I'm gonna put, but I I'm going to put Coke in A. Okay. Orange Fanta. That's a solid like B or C. It's good on occasion. I agree with that. Yeah. It's just like I'm, Big Red. I'm never, I don't like, think I've ever had. In the mood for Fanta. Um, What's Big Red? Yeah, I'm never like I have an orange Fanta. I thought that was a type of gum. It is. Uh, it's also yeah. It also is a soda. I I wish I could describe it. It's like a it's a cream soda, but also with red flavor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's essentially a cream soda. All right. The cream Off red. Your list now. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. I'm gonna put an A tier. Yeah, even though I haven't Mountain Dew is low in... for me. I just don't like it. I prefer almost any other version of it, like Mellow Yellow. Well, where's I mean, it I ranked like for you? Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew? Uh, I mean, I'll have one. It's like C. You yeah, know, it's, it's not bad. bad. It's so not like where would you rank for it? The alternative Mellow Yellow, though. Oh, Probably Mellow Yellow. I mean, yeah, I'd put A. I'd put Mellow Yellow in A. I put so my my S's. Truly is like Dr Pepper and Bark's root beer. I I think Bark's root beer is just easily hands down the best root beer. I'm sorry, Mug Maniacs. Um, and then the only the only F on this list is RC, RC Cola. Cola, RC Cola is, literally, is literally the worst. Yeah, it's straight F. Period. It's but what awful. if you combo it with a Moon Pie? F minus. That changes two. things. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I like. No, I do like Moon no, Pie. Moon Pie. Get me good. wrong. But, so, but RC Cola is still like. Cigarettes dipped in charcoal, <laughs> yeah. chewing tobacco, spit cup, like pop. That's my kind of cola. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put me in the nursing home and buy me a case. I'm Take ready. Your winter green uh, out and you dump it in the can. Uh, yeah. No, I, I haven't had a Mountain Dew in like 10 years, but I will occasionally have a, ma- a mellow yellow. Like it's been probably a couple months since I've had one, but I, I sure. love a good mellow yellow, which. I don't know I like if them. there's a difference in flavor, but for some reason it makes me feel better getting a Mellow Yellow. The vibe. Except the they vibe changed, is different with Mellow Yellow. They changed their label to yellow, yeah. which makes sense, but it like now it. makes the entire thing look like an awkward shade of yellow. So, yeah. I mean, it's nowhere near the terrible, terrible rebrand that Sierra Mist did to Starry. Starry. That now looks that like a video game soda. Yeah. I hate, I hate Starry. Pop. Starry Pop Starry's awful. the worst. The That's pop. like you've completely ruined Sierra Mist. Is I hate Starry Pop. Yeah, Sierra I'm not Mist was around it. for like 13 years or something, and they were like, nope, not do- it's not cutting it. To be fair, very well, few. Do you know why they for think Sierra Mist like a instead of uh, pop, Sprite? No. Also, that is true. Like, it's like you wanted a Sprite, but the restaurant only has Sierra Mist in its fountains. So I guess you're getting Sierra Mist. That's kind of the Sierra thing. Mist. Sierra lost Mist. a lawsuit. Sorry. Yeah, so they, they lost the lawsuit. The they had to like they, they didn't get the man. exclusive naming rights to Sierra Mist or something Starry, along the lines. Starry is so like what you said, Simi. It's just GTA pop. Like it's just it this fake. Yeah. It looks so fake. All right, moving on. The Megat asks: If you had to pick a drink, is water your number one? If not, explain why you think your incorrect ranking should be correct. MLA or APA? Minimum five hundred words. Uh, not going to do that. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, my favorite drink is water. Everybody knows I drink a ridiculous amount of water every day. It's a thirst quencher. I'm addicted to it. It's good stuff. Yeah, I'd say water is probably number one. Uh, nope. 
Yeah, I, I mean, like, <laughs> I didn't think you'd agree. Like, yeah. I the same reason I wouldn't pick a, like plain bread as like my number one food option. Like, will it sustain me? Will it keep me sure. alive? Yes. Is it like the number one in its category? No. If you're talking about With like coffee, coffee would be my number one. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. I need them. Okay. I need them coffee beans. Need their own. Need them roasted Food's beans. Bean water. That's where it's at. Man, love some good bean water. Coffee is good. I know. Yeah, you guys can say that. Absolutely. Uh, the Megat asks, also, again, we have a lot. We have a little Megat flurry here at the end. Is Sketch Frogman or Normal Frogman better? You got to rep the green and the yellow. Normal Frogman all day. Yeah, unless you paint the Sketch, then Normal's better. And then which case, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it being a I mean, legacy figure, the Sketch is like, it's, you know, you're bringing a sketch figure back to modern. That's kind of fun, but uh, I have to go with the regular one, too. Yeah. Oh, no, that reminds I mean, Maggot, me. Just compare the stats. Look at the stats, dude. The, the normal one is way better. <laughs> just look at the stats. The I best heard... sketch variant is oh, Thug. I forgot that. Uh, That's true. Ethan messaged me to see if I have a Frogman for him, and I still haven't looked. Oh. But I'm pretty sure I do. Poor Ethan. Uh. The final question Megat asks is, why isn't Legacy Carnage more popular? He's 10 points, but was only on three of the top 32 builds for Worlds. I am honestly with you on this one. It feels weird that a 10-point retail isn't on more teams. I think it's so good. I think it's pretty explainable. Like, one, I know, okay, so in a Worlds environment, this doesn't really count because you expect everyone to have everything but he is hard to acquire. Like you have to get an expensive figure and an expensive legacy card. And even before the legacy card, Carnage was still like relatively expensive, like, you know, 60 to like a hundred dollar range. And then on top of that, like 10 points in today's game. I mean, the, the further this game goes on, the more min maxing occurs. 10 points is way more valuable today than it was even just like last year. And I mean, just now looking at like Scott Porters who are like 25 points, it's so hard to compete with that, even when you are like a one-click retail. And with maps being shorter and so much alpha strike out there, it's just so easy to kill Carnage. So a lot of the time, it is just like a 10-point liability. Like, if, if Carnage doesn't fit necessarily into your team style, I think it's pretty fair to just, like, not include him because it's like, ah, he's just going to die right away. And, like, the one game that I get this off, like, is it going to be worth it? I could just pay 10 points for a ring and just have like perplex or you know mm, make constructs yeah. so in terms of like trade-off i feel like carnage is just a really big liability and it's honestly like i know it's only 10 points but it's kind of hard to fit him into teams you may see an uptick with him with like black lanterns now being a thing like monster keyword is going to be a lot more prevalent so when you need to fill one of those teams out maybe you'll see him more now but uh i probably I... would have predicted that he'd be more of top 32 I but, think you'll see I don't know, not that surprising because of rotation. Because Necro Sword and Switch are gone. I think that you'll see maybe not right away, but I think when the fifty fifty rollouts and like maybe even the like three through six rollouts start really creeping in, I think you'll see a lot more Carnage getting played just for that aspect. That's fair. But I that's my personal opinion as to why there wasn't more is because there were just better options. Like, why do a minus one to super senses? I mean, it also like he does like heal past the starting line. That's not the only reason to play him. But why just have him for a minus one super senses when you could just necro sword and not have to worry about it at all? Like, you know, so that's why I would have not played him if I was playing in worlds. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, I do agree with that because he probably wouldn't have been on my team if I was playing either, honestly, because I kind of had a team locked in and wouldn't have been that. There's so much good stuff. In, like the 10 to 30 point range, it's it's crazy how much good stuff there was. Like, I think my favorite example of it is like High Evolutionary was so good for 30 points. Never saw any play like for the last year of his yeah. modern legality. Wild and flash, yeah. even like flash didn't even see that much play, uh, comparatively. That was kind of crazy, to too. Out. So, you know, I also want to, about... I guess, really good shout out. Truly, really one of the cheapest pieces, but it's like Scott Crampton 
his bystanders is like a four point enhancement. But just again, not a lot of teams add him on there. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's uh, so it's hard to trade off over just like cheap good stuff. It's just synergy. Synergy kind of just trumps it all. Well, and I think we'll make sense though when you say it like that. Do you think that like teams trend way more harder towards? Uh, theme now that like the Scott Porters are out because after playing two of them on a team, I was like, yikes! Like, you do so much for fifty points, so much. I didn't even have either of them equipped. I was just on a theme. Like, oh wow, plus one stats to everything, plus one. Well, not even just plus one defense, plus one defense to every friendly that shares like the keyword with you that is adjacent to you. So. Ains like at his nineteen impervious or whatever, and he's next to two goons and Ivy, so he's at a twenty-two defense. Like just because I think it's of tw- unique, right? Is it unique modifier? Okay, I thought it was plus one for each, but I could either way, even just like a plus one is like very good when it's map wide like that. So do you, do you guys think that uh, Scott Porter's mean that like majority of teams are gonna be some sort of theme? I would say so. I can see I'm, that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm building a lot of teams recently, and I feel at a massive disadvantage if I'm not a theme. And the main thing that I think drives that is the trait that the black shirt one has, where you get the community tokens and you can re-roll any roll. Being able to re-roll a rollout, like any single D6 roll, like literally breaking the rules of the game, uh, it's it's too good. I don't think every team will be a theme, but I think we will see like a massive shift. I would guess like three out of four teams are theme now because that effect is just, it's so strong. Yeah. And the blanket plus one attack that you get from playing the white shirt, like that, like statistically, what are your odds of hitting? Like how much better are they now just for playing a theme? So I think sacrificing like, you know, playing maybe a better figure to get just blanket bonus stats and like guarantees on hits or guarantees on rerolls or uh, rollouts like that to me is, is very worth it. And the Scott Porter figures are also just like insane outside of that. So I would yeah. say so. So maybe we don't see more carnage then. Cause he's really, only I mean, monster is crazy good. Monster. I mean, that, that's true. Monster does have a lot of synergy and obviously it's only going to get more. It'll, it won't be like every team, like it would have been this last year where like no one was really running themes very yeah. like, few people i think if i think it's like a reverse of that you know like in top 32 there was like what five or six themes i think next year it'll probably be like five or six non themes because that that's how good the scots are like uh you know your king killmonger rolls can decide a game your apocalypse rollouts can decide a game <laughs> And being able to re-roll to like ensure those things happen is it it's just it's too good to pass up on. Sadly. Yeah. If you want to pick up your your very own, I think uh white shirt Scott is still available. Um Yes, yes he is. Yeah, use code dial H ten at shop.wizkids.com and you can not save ten percent off Scott Porter because he's a select figure, but you can save ten percent off of things that aren't pre-orders or iconics or Scott Porters. Uh, but I think Scott did have his own code. I think it was like five for Scott. Scott's tots. I don't. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> Scott did have his own code. I don't know if it's still valid. But yeah, while you're there, pick up some uh, boosters, bricks, whatever, some play at home kits, and use that code to save yourself some money. And if you want to pick up an insane amount of goons like I did and just kind of feel regretful the next day when you wake up and realize what you've done, you should do those regretful purchases at CoolStuffInc.com where you can find the latest singles and sealed products, including all the goons you could ever want. Use code DIAL5 to save 5% when you make terrible, terrible goon buying decisions. Over $100 in goons. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, happy trails. Something like that. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> We're not going there. That's how numbers work. Over okay, six yeah, people work. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of these